So welcome back, homesteaders. This is Jeremy with Colony Hills Homestead. Um, as you know, if you've been following the channel, um, we mainly deal with quail here on the farm. Um, that's that's the main thing that, w that we do. We raise many Aussies, and we also have rabbits here and goats. But someone recently asked me, hey, about rabbit feed. What do you feed? What do you offer? What do you give? And... I thought, well, I'd put it, put together a video for that because, you know, I did the same for quail and, you know, had a whole lot of uh, views and a lot of questions about that. Um, rabbits, you know, most, most of the time people are either raising them for meat or they're raising them for pets. Rabbits that we have here on the farm are lion heads. So um, they're a pet rabbit. <clears throat> Beautiful. So let's, let's just dive right into what they can and can't have. So a lot of people with their pets, especially dogs and cats, um, they want to share their indulgence of something nice that they've had to eat with their pets. It's not always a good idea. You need to know what your pets can and can't have. You need to know that. And if you don't know that, I'm going to tell you right here in the beginning, if you don't know it, don't give it, please. If you do not know if it's okay to feed this or feed that, then don't feed it, okay? Um, so, no-nos for rabbits. Let's, let's just go into that first. Um, a lot of the no-nos for rabbits I've learned were the same no-nos for quail um, that we've had. So, topping the list is avocado. Um, again, rabbits can't have avocado. Quail can't have avocado. Um, but Jeremy can. So, uh, I, I don't know. I love avocado. They cannot have avocado. Okay. It's actually toxic. There, there's something in avocado, avocado called Pearson um, that will cause death if, if you give that. So, so just be mindful. That's not something that a rabbit can have. Chocolate. Chocolate is a top one or two uh, things that they can't have. Same with dogs. Same with quail. You see now, same with rabbits. They cannot have uh, the chocolate. Fruit seeds, fruit pits. The pit of seeds contains trace amounts of cyanide, apricot, plum, you know, peach. Those come to mind. Um, cyanide is not good for anybody, regardless of whether it's trace amounts. Um, so we're not going to feed that. The same goes for rabbits as with quail. The next thing I'm fixing to mention, which is onions. Anything in that category of root, bulb root items, lentils, onions, garlic, none of these animals can have that. That is toxic. <clears throat> um, it's a long, it's a long drawn out process, but there's something in it that um, affects the red blood cells, and we don't want to go down that road, so you just don't feed that. Meat, eggs, dairy, we're not going to feed those things. Look, guys, if you cook it and eat it, don't give it to your animals. If, if it's something that you cook and you eat, it's probably not good for them, all right? They don't eat it. They don't eat it. They're looking for fresh items, fresh stuff. Iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce, you would think, oh, I can give that to a rabbit. Well, it has lact... Let me, let me look at the exact word here. Lactocarium in it. They can handle the dark green leafy vegetables like romaine, leaf, leaf lettuce, you know, things like that. Icebergs, stay away from. I don't even eat it myself anymore. It tastes like water. 99.9% .9 water. It doesn't have any caloric value anyway. So don't give it to your pets. Don't give it to your birds. Don't give it to your rabbits. If it has no caloric value, don't give it. No reason. <coughs> mushrooms. The mycotoxins in mushrooms, um, I guess that's for select people, not me. But do not give it to your animals. Okay? They, they don't need that. They wouldn't eat it in the wild. Um, they're not going to eat it now. So any pro, excuse me, any processed foods. Um, we're talking cereals, grains, rice. 
anything made from corn, grits, uh, processed foods. Do not give that to them. You know, do would they eat pasta? Would they eat spaghetti? Would they eat those things, macaroni? Yeah. Yeah, quail will eat it. Rabbits will eat it. It's high in sugar. It's high in starch. It's high in carbs. You're going to create a fat animal that's going to have diseases because of that. So that's the reason you don't go that route. I'm not saying it's necessarily poison uh, when we're talking about processed foods, but there's no reason for them to have that. So keep that way. Let's talk about what we can feed. High fiber pellets, 25 to 50 grams a day. Um, so when I was young, I raised rabbits. Um, I feel like this phone is moving around, so I'm going to try to keep that from happening. I'm going to get off the table. So I raised rabbits, and, you know, the idea with FFA and, and all this stuff was to get your rabbits to wait quick as you could get them to wait uh, for the show and all this. We're not talking about doing that for a healthy rabbit, especially if you're talking about breeding, um, you know, raising your own meat rabbits. That, you don't want those things. So um, you want to make sure your rabbit is healthy, your rabbit is not eating high carbohydrate, high sugar foods that are just going to cause fat weight and cause disease. So you need a high fiber pellet, okay? But I was feeding those high fiber pellets as a big portion of their diet. A lot of people don't realize rabbits, 80% of their diet needs to be hay. Hay. So... I purchased Timothy hay for my rabbits in a compressed bell, and that's that's what I give my rabbits is Timothy hay. Uh, they can eat alfalfa hay. They can eat coastal hay. They can eat any, any of those type of hays. But their teeth also grow at one to two millimeters a month, so they need that hay to grind their teeth down um, so that they don't have a problem with the overgrowth. So they need to hay. 80% of their diet needs to be hay. So you've got 10% that should be pellets and 10% should be fresh veggies or some fruits. Now, saying that, I'm going to tell you, you need to keep fruit in a tiny amount because it is still a lot of sugar. You know, fructose doesn't even have to be broken down in the glucose to be used by your body. So you're not even burning energy to use that sugar. It just goes straight. So um, some of the things that we grow here, um, actually inside the house, we grow through hydroponic systems that we have in a, in a back bedroom. Um, they will eat lavender, and I've wrote a few down here, so I'm going to be looking down. Lavender, peppermint, cilantro, parsley. We give our rabbits a lot of parsley. We give them a lot of basil. They can have dill, rosemary, sage, cucumber. Rabbits love cucumber, but the caloric value of a cucumber is nothing. So, So we really need to... If you want to give it as a treat, give a little bit. You can slice cucumber and give it to them. They'll, they'll love it. I love you for it. Carrots, the same way. You you can give, you can slice up carrots. You know, the old ad is that rabbits love carrots. Sure they do. You know, they love carrots. But you what you don't know is they would rather have the carrot tops than the carrot root, than the carrot itself. So um, just think about those things when you're feeding. Um you need 80% hay, you need some pellets, and you need some veggies, okay? Um, they can eat broccoli, not cauliflower. They can eat broccoli. They can eat the carrot tops. Um, there's a lot of veggies they can eat. They can eat anything that's dark and leafy. Um, they can eat a lot of herbs like we talked about. But if you do not know if your rabbit can eat it, don't feed it to your rabbit, please. Don't feed it to your rabbit. Um, okay, so I don't know where you are from. Maybe you could shoot me a message below. But we're in the middle of winter. Uh, looking forward to spring coming up. 
It's February here in East Texas, and we have had a winter storm come through. Now, it was not anything like last year. We had a week last year around uh, Valentine's that just put us out, man. Uh, we were stuck at work. You know, it, it was just, it wasn't good. Wasn't good. So, let me close that off. It said the battery is about gone. Um, but, yeah, shoot, shoot me a message. I want to know how cold it is where you're at. And all of y'all talking about, oh, y'all Texas guys, y'all Texas people are whining. Oh, it gets so cold where I'm at, and y'all are whining about this. And let me tell you, Texas was not built for this, guys. We're not built for this weather that y'all get. We're just not built for it. Um, you know, if it's below 30 in Texas, we call it cold, and we want to know what's going on. We want it over with. Um, I understand that, that a lot of the upper states and northern states um, deal with a lot colder weather, but Texas wasn't, the infrastructure was not built to handle that. So that's why we're having some of the problems we have, you know, with the power grid and the water and, and all these things. But, you know, at least respect that and uh, know that we are dealing with some stuff. So it's not that our bodies can't handle it. It's stuff. You know, it's electricity, it's water, it's homes, it's vehicles, it's roads, it's road prep. Um, you know, we don't have that where we're at. So um, I wish y'all the best. Stay warm. If your pets are sleeping outside, sleep outside with them tonight. Keep your livestock warm, keep them fed, keep them watered, please. Um, come on, they're creatures just like we are. Um, let's make sure that they have plenty of fresh feed, fresh water, that's gonna keep them warm. Um, make sure they're sheltered up, make sure your pets um, have a nice warm place, plenty of food, fresh water, or heck, bring them in. So that's it from us here at Colony Hills Homestead. God bless you. See you again soon.